Okay, hey everybody, welcome back. This is going to be part two of my cast core video. Uh, in this one, I'm going to show you how to build a heat riser. And this is going to be pretty short, um, but it'll get you up and running. So, what I like to use for a heat riser, the materials that you'll need one bag of fire clay, one 50 pound bag of fire clay, about four cubic feet of perlite. You might need a little more, but that's probably adequate. Um, one small steel barrel. These are sometimes called grease drums. They're about 17 gallon barrels. Um, and one piece section of 8 inch flue pipe, roughly 31 inches long. Um, don't get anything fancy. Just get whatever you can find for cheap or free because it's going to burn out. So here we go. So start with your drum. should be about 14 inches in diameter and um, roughly 27 inches tall. Like I said, that's going to be about a 17 gallon drum. You can find these often at oil change places or big truck fluid change places. Like they use them to carry grease. Um, so that's a good place to try and find one. You want to cut a hole. It should have an open top if it doesn't cut one end off. And then you'll cut an 8 inch hole. Um, just enough to let the flue pipe poke through on one end. So you just kind of want to stick it through with the crimped end so it protrudes about an inch. And all that does is just kind of creates kind of a seal so you can stack the fire clay and perlite in there. So as I told you that flue pipe is about 31 inches. I cut mine with a cutoff wheel on a grinder. Um, definitely wear protection if you're going to do it that way. Um, and then you just go ahead and set it up on top of your core. In this case I'm doing it on a core that I've used before so I don't really show you too much of that process. But you want to have your core packed in cob already at this point um, and leveled. And then you can just set that on there and make sure it's nice and level. You can use a little bit of mud between the bottom of the barrel and the core, but you shouldn't need to. Um, there'll be mud coming later to seal the edges, um, so you, if you want to put a little, bit, little there to level it or seal it, that's fine. And you want to make your clay slurry. You want to make it really wet. You're going to be surprised how much um, the perlite dries it out and how much perlite you're going to put into it. So let it be pretty wet. You can see it's it's kind of like a puddle. I drag my shovel through it. It still holds a little bit of shape there, but it's wet, and I even added more water after that. So then you start adding in your perlite. You want to mix it until it's really pretty dry. You can see I formed a ball there in the middle of the uh, picture. So it'll still form a ball, and I haven't mixed all the perlite in yet at this point, um, but I was able to form a ball, and then when you squeeze the ball, it should kind of pop apart under your hands. You shouldn't be able to squish your fingers through it. Um, it shouldn't feel like mud anymore. It should sort of be dry and uh, and not have a whole lot of structural integrity when you kind of squish on it like that. So that's what you're going for. You'll be surprised, like I said, how much perlite you'll be able to get in there. And don't be afraid to start with pretty wet clay. It makes it easier to mix at first um, if, it's got, if it's pretty wet and then you can add the perlite in to dry it out. So once you've got it to that point, all you do is pack that into the space between the barrel and the flue. I put a cap on that flue pipe just to keep uh, stuff from dropping in there, but that's just temporary. You can use a piece of wood or just be careful. And um, like I said, do it in place. Pack it in there, uh, around there. I use a piece of wood to kind of pack it down as I go. Pack it pretty tight so it holds its shape, and then that flue pipe is taller than the barrel. So you'll build up that last section above the barrel or the drum up to the flue pipe, and you can kind of taper it so that as it dries, it doesn't want to fall off to the sides. It's sort of self-supporting, as you can see. So this makes a really strong structure, um, and then you just kind of seal the bottom with mud. This is actually the outside barrel. I put the barrel on uh, and just seal it up with some cob, and you're ready to fire her up. So you can see in this one I didn't use the furnace cement. You shouldn't need it. Um, so that's it. This is a quick one. I wanted to get it up there for you guys. Um, but I hope that gets you on your way.